Okay guys, welcome to the video. I've got something very, very special for you today. For the past seven days, I've been swiping and messaging on Tinder non-stop. Also, I could see how many dates I could get as an average guy in a short amount of time. You can see the photos I've used on the screen now. These are above average photos. It did take me a lot of time to get these photos and they've all been enhanced to get the maximum results possible. The percentages you can see on the screen here, they are not made up. I actually got every single one of these photos tested on Photofila, which is a website where you can get your images rated by women. So this particular photo was rated by 50 women, all in the age range of 18 to 29. And as you can see, it reached in the top 5% of attractiveness, a 9.5. And if we look over on this side of the screen, 27 of the women said that it was very attractive. I was very attractive in this photo. 16 said yes, 7 said somewhat, 0 said none. So if you want to get results as an average guy on Tinder, this is the kind of quality of photos you need. And I'm going to be showing all of the results in this video. So make sure you keep watching until the very end to see what level of results you can get as an average guy. Anyway, we'll get straight into the results now. For the experiment, which lasted seven days, I swiped a total of 1,807 times. And of these, 725 of them were right swipes, which meant that 1,082 of them were left swipes. For the most part, I was only swiping on women who were attractive and looked date-worthy material. Uh, not necessarily relationship material, but at the very least, you would go on a date with them, maybe have a few casual fun times with them. And just to give you a quick indication, here's a quick video. This was the level of girls that I was swiping on. So you can see mostly five sixes, sevens, a couple eights here and there. No women that were below a five in attractiveness. This was the level of uh, attractiveness I was swiping on because as most of you guys watching, you want to get dates with this kind of caliber of girls, not below average women. Next, of the 725 right swipes, this resulted in 98 matches, which means that I didn't match with 602. However, of this 725, there was also an, an additional 25 women that liked me but they were either really far away or they were unattractive. So I didn't match with these women. So in terms of the actual date-worthy attractive matches, there were 98 of those. And if we just take a look quickly at this graph, which is the number of matches I got per day, you can see there is a huge drop-off after the first few days. So on day one, I got 43 matches, and by the end of the week, it's literally 10 times less. I was getting five three and four matches, which shows that on Tinder, if you create a fresh new account, you do get a massive boost from the algorithm. And this is what some people say is how Tinder tries to scam you guys in terms of uh, wanting you to buy their products, buy the boost, buy the Tinder Gold, Platinum, whatever, uh, because most people get a lot of matches as they create a fresh new account, but then a couple weeks later, they're getting barely any matches. A little bit more information the experiment took place in Birmingham UK which has a population of 1 million people I was uh, setting the age range to 18 to 25 year olds only and it was a 10 kilometer radius so only people that lived close to where I am and lastly I did purchase tinder platinum it was only 30 quid but the main reason I did that was to increase my ranking in the algorithm because uh, if you pay if you're a paying customer Tinder does reward you and give you more matches for that. They only care about the customers that are actually paying for their services. Next, of the 98 matches that I got, this resulted in me getting 24 WhatsApp numbers, which meant that 74 of the women on Tinder just stopped responding. They either refused to give me their WhatsApp number or they, more often than not, they would just stop responding to messages. And this part of the experiment, I would say, was the most frustrating part because the vast majority of women that you were matching with and you would anticipate if you've matched with them that they find you attractive they might want to see you but it's simply not the case most of the women you match with 75 percent of them will just stop responding for whatever reason they will take eight hours to respond they will send one word messages they will just ignore your questions things like that 
And in fact, I even took this screenshot. This just epitomizes what uh, I, I'm talking about. I would send these girls a message and I would even send them follow-up messages a couple of days later if they didn't respond, just to you know refresh the conversation at the top of their uh, message list. And then they would still ignore that. So it was, for the most part, a fruitless attempt. I was getting ignored for the most part by the vast majority of women. However, I still got 24 WhatsApp numbers. Next, of these 24 WhatsApp numbers, that resulted in me offering 22 dates, which meant that I didn't off offer dates to two women. So two women stopped responding on WhatsApp. And this was quite a lifesaver, I, I thought, because on Tinder, if there's 100 other guys in a girl's inbox, then you're only one of them and it's going to be quite difficult for her to invest in the conversation and be compliant, uh, you know, jump through the hoops that you lay out. However, once you get a woman on WhatsApp, because there might only be three or four of those guys over there, the level of compliance and investment from the woman goes up dramatically. And this is how I ended up offering 22 dates to the women that I got WhatsApp numbers from. Next, of these 22 dates that I offered, you're not going to believe this, 22 of them said yes. I am not joking on this point. I could show you the proof on my phone. All 22 of the girls that I offered dates to on WhatsApp in the very next message said yes. They all agreed and wanted to uh, go on a date with me. However, that is not the full story because this was the second most frustrating part of the experiment. Of all of these 22 women that said yes, in the very next part of the message conversation, as soon as I started trying to arrange the logistics, only nine of them actually went through with those logistics and arranged plans, a time and place to meet up. So I only included this data in terms of a woman being a successful date. I wasn't going to include the 22 yeses because I know that the vast majority of them, in this case, 13 of them, started getting flaky as soon as I would want to arrange the logistics of how we can meet up, what time we can meet up, where we can meet up, and so on. And just to show you a couple examples of what I mean by this, um, this one, this particular girl, uh, she had already agreed to me that she wanted to meet up, she agreed for a date on Tinder, so in this message here, I reinstate that idea and ask her if she wants to meet up on Monday. She says she's free from Sunday till Tuesday, in the very next message, I say, how does Sunday or Monday at 2 p.m. sound? And then she just ignores me for the next two days. So on the 25th of April, that was when the message was sent, and then nothing for the next two days. So she agreed to the date, then she just ignores me for two days. So two days later, I send a follow-up message, and then in this message you can see that she says that she's not actually interested in meeting up. So she was only saying she was earlier for the sake of it. Another example, this one's very similar. I ask her if she fancies meeting up for a drink in the next couple days, and then she says, yes, I think that would be nice, sure, why not? You seem genuine and nice, so I don't see a problem with, with that. On, on the surface, that sounds really high investment, that she wants to meet up. There's three whole lines there showing that she is down for the idea. However, in the next message, as soon as I start trying to arrange the logistics, she just stops responding and there was no messages after this. She just ignores it. So this message here where she actually agreed to meet up, you could tell it was just fake and she was just trying to be impolite. And as I said, this happened 13 out of the 22 times. And the final example, this one again is the exact same. I'd still be interested in meeting if you are. She says, definitely, as in yes, 100%. I say, fantastic, glad you're on board. I try arranging the, the logistics, Tuesday or Wednesday. She says, I'll have a look at my timetable to see when I'm free. And then she just stops responding again. So it's all of the same sort of idea. And 13 out of the 22 women do this, roughly two thirds. I ended up sending a follow up uh, a couple days later and nothing ended up happening from it. Anyway, without letting myself getting too bitter, I still ended up getting nine dates in seven days, which I was quite happy with. I think that is a good result as an average guy for Tinder and I genuinely wasn't expecting that to get that level of results in those seven days. However, this is probably the most important part of the video because it's all well and good as I'm sure a lot of you guys are on the same page getting nine dates, a decent amount of quantity, 
But what about the quality? It wouldn't make any difference. It wouldn't help if these nine dates were uh, unattractive or undate worthy material. Well, this is where the next part of the video comes in. So I've compiled all of the nine dates. I've got proof with the screenshots of them wanting to meet up, pictures, uh, their SMV, purity, everything like that to just show how high was the quality of these dates that I was getting from Tinder. We'll start with the first one. So this was Amber, the girl from the thumbnail you can see. And she was probably the most attractive date that I managed to arrange. See, she was about a seven out of 10, I would say, in terms of looks. She was quite flaky. It took 3.5 days to arrange the date. And in that time, I only sent 15 messages. So, you know, that's only about three, four or five per day. It's not much. She was taking quite a lot of time to respond. In terms of purity, I would say a medium. Uh, she had a couple racy outfits in the photos, but nothing too extreme. And just to give you guys a quick explanation of what I'm talking about when I mention purity, it's basically a measure of how much relationship material a given girl is. And this example I've got on the screen now is the very opposite of that. So this is an example of very low purity. This is what you don't want to be bringing home to your parents and is not relationship material. You can just see she's got like the dyed pink hair, piercings, tattoos, she's a smoker, you know, a bit extravagant outfits, uh, like the painted black nails, just things like that. You can just tell she's not relationship material based on these photos. This is all the same girl, by the way. It's the same girl, she's got different dyed hair colour in each one. Another example, again, not relationship material. Don't break my heart, break my bed instead. Like, no guy is going to be wanting to wife up a girl with this in her bio. And one more example, this was probably the worst profile I saw. Out of all of the 1800 profiles that I saw and I swiped on, this was probably the worst of the lot. The girl is literally sitting on a toilet which seems to be a festival, and all guys in the UK know how festival girls are, for the most part, in terms of their datableness. They don't have the best track records. Uh, so she's on a toilet, she looks to be drunk or passed out, something like that. She's with her mates, and they decided to take a photo, and then upload that to their Tinder profile. So it just looks ridiculous. Um, I would never in a million years swipe on a girl who's got photos like this. It's completely bonkers. And... To top it all off, this actually annoyed me when I saw this in the profile. This was the worst bio I've ever seen. You will never catch me messaging first. Kissy face. It's just baffling. So she's got this horrendous photo of her on a toilet, and then she's got the audacity to try and say, you will never catch me messaging first. She thinks she's such high value that you're going to have to be the one to chase me not the other way around. She thinks that she's on her throne on the toilet here and she ex expects guys to go chasing after her. It's just completely the wrong way around. Anyway, that's what I'm talking about when I mentioned purity. Uh, this was the first date. Now moving on to the second one. This was Bella, who I would say was also a seven out of 10 in terms of SMV. She had a French accent and this was the first message she sent. And I could tell straight away and you'll see a few more examples of this, that when a woman compliments you or, you know, mentions that you're something related to their type, the chance that they will be invested and compliant in the uh, conversation later on and be willing to meet up goes up dramatically. It's literally a 10x chance uh, of a woman being compliant, wanting to meet up if she compliments you on your appearance in the first message. So she said, I have to admit, I thought you looked a bit like Prince Harry when I saw your profile pictures, aha. You've probably heard that before as well. This girl's purity was very high. You can tell by the photos. She's just some normal looking, sweet girl. There's no extravagant racy pictures where she's showing a lot of skin or anything like that. She just looks like a you know normal type of person. As for the next one, this was Kai, uh, an Asian girl. In fact, the next three dates the next two dates, sorry, uh, that I've got lined up were all Asian girls. And this was probably the most impressive of the lot because if we take a look at the time to arrange, 51 minutes. I am not joking. So if we just take a look at this screenshot here, you can see 9.59 was when this message was sent. And there was actually one before, but she ignored that. I did send a follow-up. Uh, but from this message on, she started responding immediately, 
every single time, extremely compliant, 9.59 till when she agrees to the date at 10.50 the same day. So it went from opening message to closing the date in 51 minutes. I was very impressed by how easy this particular one was. And there was 56 messages sent in that time. As one lo last point on this, her purity was probably also the highest of the lot because she mentioned she lives in an all-female apartment at the university. And for anyone who lives in the UK, you'll all know that women who pick all-female accommodation are as pure as it gets. These are women who don't go out drinking, don't go out partying. They essentially just sit home and read their book all day. As for the next one, do you? This was another Asian girl. This one was extremely easy once more, only took 127 minutes to arrange and 23 messages. You can see the proof of the screenshot here. This is a photo of her. Number five, Etsu. This one, again, was the last Asian girl that I got. Her purity was quite high. You can tell she's just wearing normal clothes, just looks like a normal looking girl. Five out of 10 in SMV, took two days and 28 messages. Number six, this was Faye. Once more, you can see with the compliment on the first message, if a woman sends you a compliment, it's going to be very easy. She said that I'm very handsome in my photos. Uh, her purity was a medium because, as you can see, she's got like a tattoo. You know, some people say that that could be potentially a strike against her. It might indicate that she's not relationship material. She was reasonably compliant. It only took 30 messages to send, but it took three days, you know, which shows a significant time between each message. Number seven, this was Grace. Once more again with a compliment, uh, that's very sweet of you. You are not so bad for yourself for a ginger guy. It took 88 messages and three days uh, to get her out. And she was another six out of 10, so slightly above average. Number eight, this was Hazel. This girl was extremely flaky, extremely flaky. It took four days uh, to arrange a date. And in that time, only 24 messages were sent. I just remember it, like there'll be like eight hour gaps between her sending the messages. Like even on this final one, you can see I arranged the logistics of the date. She doesn't get back to confirm the date until three hours later. So I just remember this particular girl was taking extremely long times in order to arrange it. Her purity was high because as you can see in her photos, she just looks like a normal looking girl, uh, you know, doesn't go out partying, getting drunk, uh, do a bunch of crazy stuff. She's just a normal person. And lastly, the ninth one and final one, very similar to the last person. Again, just a normal looking average girl, slightly above average, six out of 10. And we again see the compliment on the first message. Hi Sam, I bet you get this all of the time you're not too bad yourself. So what I'm basically trying to double down is that if a woman sends you a compliment in one of the opening messages, the chance that she will be compliant, invested, and willing to see you go on a date with you is extremely high compared to the women that don't do that. Anyway, those are the nine dates. And for the final part of the video, I'm going to give my verdicts of what I thought about this entire experiment. I've compiled all of the nine dates here so you can compare, you know, who the best option potentially would have been, whatever. You know, I didn't see any of these girls, uh, but I've just, you know, showing you what potential results you can get as an average guy on a dating app. And given this, I think this is what begs the question, is it worth it as an average guy if you get good photos? Is Tinder or any dating app a good avenue, potential avenue that you can use as an average guy with good photos to source dates, get women involved in your life, potentially even a relationship. And to answer that question, this is not just to my surprise, but to all of you watching surprise, I've actually proved myself wrong on this. I think the data speaks for itself. The answer is undeniably yes. The data shows that this is true. If you disagree with me on this point, you're only disagreeing with the data and what I've proved in this video, that if you're an average guy with the right photos, the right looks, the right angles, you absolutely can get good results, dates, potentially even a relationship at the end of it once you go out with all of them. Like nine dates in seven days is no slouch. And these aren't unattractive girls. These are, for the most part, above average with some average girls in between. And based on the surface of it, in terms of purity, they all could potentially be decent in terms of relationship uh, potential as well. Most of them are high to very high purity. So 
this just shows if you get nine dates, obviously it's not a guarantee, but I think that there will be at least one, two, three, potentially even four that could end up being relationship material if you uh, end up actually going on a date with them, seeing how far you go. So that's the conclusion that I've reached. You're more than welcome to disagree with me on it. I know I've changed my mind on it, but I'll just repeat one more time. The data speaks for itself, and I don't think I can disagree with the data on this conclusion. But anyway, given this conclusion that I believe we've reached, that if you're an average guy, that getting good photos can make Tinder a viable option, and all of the other dating apps a viable option, I am pleased to announce for the very first time on this channel's history, we have a sponsor. So this is Justin, and part of the reason I even made this video is because he reached out to me. And he is a pro Miami-based Tinder photographer, so his specialty is literally in Tinder. He's not just some random photographer who takes photos. His specialty is getting average guys up to speed, increasing their results specifically for Tinder. And you can see that these aren't the top 5% looks guys. These are, for the most part, average guys. But with the right angles, lighting, fashion, and picture quality, he can get guys, average guys, into the top 10%. And that's why I thought that he would be uh, a perfect fit for this video, Justin, with the service that he offers. You can tell just by looking, these aren't top 10% giga chads. These are average guys who have really good photos. The results, you know, you can see them on the screen. I didn't even need to explain how impressive he's got these average guys up to speed. And I'm sure based on the comparison of the results that I've got on Tinder in the experiment that I've displayed today, the men that are shown in these images would very likely be getting similar results to what I can. So to top it all off and, you know, get into the conclusion of this video, Justin has an Instagram page, which will be the first link in the description. If you're interested in what he has to offer, if you're impressed with the results that I've gotten today as an average guy with good photos, and you want to try and repeat something similar, then I think Justin's service, the service that he offers, is the perfect fit for you trying to achieve that goal. If you're interested, he's got a bunch more uh, photos of other clients he's worked with on his Instagram profile. The link will be the first in the description, as I've already said. And if you're interested in working with him, then the link will be below. And thank you, Justin, for being the sponsor of this video.